Welcome to Electron Line. In this example, we realize that when we're dealing with three capacitors, we can connect them in series and in parallel connections. So far, we've dealt with series connections. Now we're going to do an example where we're connecting them in parallel connections. We're trying to simplify it by again calling each of the three capacitors or making them equal to one another, two, two, and two microfarads, and only having one of them charge with four microcoulombs of charge. Notice that the capacitance is still Q over V, which can be solved for the voltage across capacitor being equal to the ratio of charge divided by capacitance. So what does it look like when we connect these capacitors in parallel? This is what it will look like. Here's what we start with, with all the charge on one of the three capacitors. And it won't take long before this charge will start moving from here onto this capacitor here and from this charge onto this capacitor there. So you can see that when they're connected in parallel, you don't have this kind of hopping kind of situation where each time you move one charge, it moves all the way down the line like you, do, like you see in a series connection. In a parallel connection, you have to make a choice as to where that charge is going to go. Some of the charge will go here and some additional charge will go over there. Now, how do you find out what the final distribution of charge will be. We're looking now for Q1, Q2, and Q3, the charge you end up with in the steady state situation at the end when all the charge is moved around. The way to do that is to realize that in parallel connections, the voltages are the same on each of the branches, which means that the voltage across 1 must equal the voltage across 2, which must equal the voltage across 3. Notice that we have the positive charge at the top and the negative charge at the bottom of each of the three capacitors. If we now use this relationship right here, that means that the final Q1 over C1 must equal Q2 over C2, which must equal Q3 over C3. And in this example, makes it quite easy, we can see that C1, since C1 equals C2 equals C3. We can simply get rid of all the C1s, C2s, and C3s because they're all equal. We're dividing by the same number, which means that Q1 must equal to Q2 must equal to Q3. Now, we still need to figure out what those are equal to. Well, we see here that we started with some initial charge, and all that charge got distributed over the three capacitors, which means that the sum of the three Q1 plus Q2 plus Q3 must equal the total charge you started with, which was the total charge on Q1 to begin with. That means the sum of the three charges, final charges, Q1 plus Q2 plus Q3, must equal 40 microcoulombs. We're now getting closer. If Q2 is equal to Q1 and Q3 is equal to Q1, we can take this equation and rewrite it as follows. We can now say that Q1 plus Q1, since Q2 is equal to Q1, plus Q1, since Q3 is equal to Q1, and set that equal to 40, which means 3 times Q1 is equal to 40, and therefore Q1, oop, that should be small q, and so Q1 is equal to 40 divided by 3, which is 13.33 microcoulombs. And of course, since all the charges must be equal, Q2 must be equal to 13.33 microcoulombs, and Q3 must be equal to 13.33 microcoulombs. And here in this example, you will notice that if you add these three together, you do get the original charge that you started with. And the reason why that's the case, because all the positive ends are connected to one another. So you're not negating any charge, you're simply redistributing the charge. All the original charge is simply redistributed across the three capacitors. And since they are equal in size, each capacitor must therefore have an equal amount of charge. It does make a lot of sense. And again, using the rules and the equations defining the capacitance, we can see that yes, we end up with the correct charge if we do it that way. And that's how it's done.